Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me. We are uh, pushing through this week, this week that's been earmarked with the 4th of July and all kinds of celebrations. In the midst of those celebrations, we've had some troubling times, of course. There are always shootings. There are folks sick in the hospital. There are those that uh, I would say this morning, pray for my friend, Robin Kimball Rawlins, who's in ICU back in Georgia with an apparent stroke. Let's pray for her this morning, among others. Let's pray for those families affected by those mass shootings where crazy people who are obviously off on Satan's agenda have just decided that July 4th is a good time to go shoot some people. Yeah, it's a crazy world, isn't it? But as we get to the craziness of this world this morning, I think Jesus has some good words for us. So grab a good cup of coffee. Join me over in the 22nd chapter of Luke's gospel. We're going to start down in verse 24 in just a minute. But let me ask you this question. Who do you think the goat is? Now, goat used to be a derogatory term, but some folks have taken that and used it as an acronym to mean greatest of all time. And you'll see these on discussion boards quite often as someone will throw the question out there, especially concerning sports figures. Well, who's the greatest NASCAR driver of all time? Who was the greatest basketball center of all time? Who was the greatest catcher in Major League Baseball? What about who's the greatest quarterback? And then take every position, every age, and you can have just endless discussion about who's the greatest. And what's amazing is how many athletes want to point to themselves. It's not just athletes, it's actors, it's all kinds of people who get in a public sphere, get on a stage and say, look at me, I've made it. I'm the goat for today, meaning the greatest of all time. Or at least sometimes they'll even pay people under the table to say that about them. Oh, friends, what kind of world is this? Well, it's the kind of world that Jesus said you should turn away from. You should be just the opposite of those people who want to be called great. Because here we are sitting at the Lord's table at the Last Supper. Jesus has already demonstrated by coming in and washing the disciples' feet that he's the ultimate servant. He's already told his disciples that he's going to lay his life down for them, the ultimate act of sacrifice. He has presented the elements of the Passover feast as saying, this represents my body and my blood that's going to be surrendered for you. You'd think the disciples would get it by now. Let's see. Verse number 24. Then a dispute also arose among them about who should be considered the greatest. Seriously? <laughs> Guys, you're going to look around at these ragtag fishermen, tax collectors, zealots, all kinds of backgrounds, and you're going to try to have a discussion about who's the goat among you? Come on. But that's exactly what's happening. They don't have it settled yet, do they? They also don't have the Holy Spirit yet. They don't have the perspective of the crucifixion and the resurrection. They're still immature. They're still working on it. And here they are embroiled in a discussion about which one of them is the greatest. Oh, come on. Jesus responds in verse 25. But he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who have authority over them have themselves called benefactors. It is not to be like that among you. On the contrary, whoever is greatest among you should become like the youngest, and whoever leads like the one serving. For who is greater? The one at the table or the one serving? Isn't it the one at the table? But I am among you as the one who serves. Now Jesus is basically saying to his disciples, I'm giving you a new paradigm of greatness. It's not the person who toots their own horn, who points to themselves, who demands the spotlight. That's not the greatest in the kingdom of God. It's the person who gets on their knees in the prayer closet and intercedes for others. It's the person who goes out and knocks on that door with a bag of groceries to the person that's hungry. It's the one who shows up to do something that you can't do for yourself, to take you to the doctor when you don't have a ride and you're unable to drive. 
These are the great people in the kingdom of God, and they're never mentioned by those in great places today. They're never the ones put at center stage. Instead, it's some of those who have some kind of fake accomplishments like being able to memorize lines in a movie. Oh, friends, listen, real greatness, I think, will be recognized in the halls of heaven when we discover people whose names never made it to the spotlight in this age, but who God has been keeping great track of. And he'll let us know who the greatest among us really is. Jesus said, I don't want you to be like those people in the world today who are trying to demand a spotlight. Instead, I want you to be, as I have demonstrated to you, servants. I want you to be servants to the world. Give of yourselves to share this great and glorious gospel, to bless others, and to share among the people of the world the greatest message of all. If you do that, you will be the greatest in the kingdom of God. But don't expect the world to raise banners over you. Don't expect them to recognize you. Matter of fact, they may want to kill you before it's over with. But you'll be greatest in the kingdom of God. He even mentions now to this group of folks who they don't look like they could ever be rulers or judges or people in positions of authority that you would give any responsibility to. I mean, think about the way they have acted over the past three years. But look what Jesus says about them at the end of this passage. He said in verse 28, you are those who stood by me in my trials and I bestow on you a kingdom just as my father bestowed one on me so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Wow, <laughs> you guys are going to be given a responsibility. Didn't you know that? Well, they don't look too responsible right now, sitting around arguing over who's the greatest. But you know, they'll get it one day, won't they? I hope you have uh, had that revelation that real greatness in the kingdom of God is about serving and giving and blessing others, being a conduit for the blessings of God into the lives of other people. That's what Jesus is trying to say to his disciples. And he says it at such a poignant time right after the observance of what we today call the Lord's Supper, where Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood, and it's all being given just for you. So go out and be that servant this week that God wants you to be. Look for someone to share with. You know, there are times when it just drops into our lap. It may be that time like I experienced not too long ago when a little lady had a almost flat tire in the Ingalls parking lot and I always keep a tire inflator in my trunk and was able to just pump up a tire for her. She was in her 80s and she couldn't do that herself. Yeah, she had a son, but he worked in a distant city. He couldn't come over and do that. It was my pleasure to just take some time out of my busy day. Not to say, oh, no, I've got a tight schedule. I've got somewhere to be. But just the ability to be able to pump up her tire in the parking lot. Not only blessed her, but you know what? After doing something like that, as you're putting the, <laughs> the uh, pump back in your trunk, and after you've already asked, do you, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah, the reason I'm doing something like this is because I just love God and love people. And to find out she was a fellow believer, and we had quite a good fellowship there in the parking lot, I went away from that time saying, God, thank you for giving me the opportunity to just, in a simple way, serve someone else in the body of Christ. It was such a blessing. And that's the kind of reaction the disciples, I hope, will have all across the world as Jesus echoes down through uh, all of the ages and says to us, the greatest, the goat among you is going to be the one who serves, the one who serves the most, the one who serves with joy, who does it gladly all the time. I think there's a great recognition day coming one day in the halls of heaven for the greatest among us, whoever that might be. Thanks for spending some time with me this morning. We'll do it again tomorrow right here as we wake up in God's Word.